Eight seat now heading to a runoff on both the Republican and Democratic side. What are the candidates on the Democratic side addressing their plans for their campaign? In an effort to save more lives, Bulverde Spring Branch Emergency Services has a new tool in their arsenal. This new Max Massey explains what that new tool is and why they need it. Live from Case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. But we start with Ukraine. The Russian government says it is sending a delegation for a second round of peace talks with Ukraine. This, even as Russian forces intensify their attacks on civilian and government targets. One of the Russian strikes taking out a communications tower and damaging a nearby Ukrainian Holocaust memorial. That is where 33,000 Jews were slaughtered by the Nazis. ABC's Ian Panel is in Ukraine with more. Over the last 24 hours, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has increased in terms of brutality and aggression, increasingly using airstrikes, missiles to target what they say are military targets, but in actual fact is often civilian infrastructure. In the town of Jotomir, which is to the west of here, a cruise missile landing in a residential part of the town. At least 10 houses were destroyed, the local hospital damaged, and a number of people killed. In Kharkiv, in the east of the country, near the border with Russia. Again, a lot of bombardment coming in from the Russians, hitting civilian infrastructure, hitting residential neighborhoods. Uh, this morning, a police headquarters was struck. You can see images of the top of the building partially destroyed and burning. And here in Kyiv, we have this massive Russian column at times more than 40 miles long, starting to close in on the city. We're inside one of the main children's hospitals, not just in the city, but in the country. They've got about 190 patients here. But of course, as the war closes in the people who are risking their own lives to look after the children are worried about what happens next in terms of supplies medicines oxygen but also the children's safety they've moved five kids uh, babies who need bone marrow transplants across the border into Poland 15 uh, other children have also been moved to safety but there are some children here who are on dialysis who can't be moved they need transplants they're desperately ill and of course the hospital staff are really worried about what will happen Happened. But many of the patients are now living underground in the basement where they're still being tended to, but with no clear idea of how things will pan out as the attacks close in. The hospital director warning of a humanitarian catastrophe, not just for Ukraine, but for the entire region. Ian Panel, ABC News in Kyiv, Ukraine. Back here at home, the primary election in the books, and several candidates are celebrating a win for their party's nominations. However, even at this hour, one race is very uncertain. The tightest race of the night was the Democratic primary for Congressional District 28, which is headed to a runoff, according to the Associated Press. Now, the AP did not call the runoff until 2 this morning. Congressman Henry Cuellar has 48 percent of the vote and immigration attorney Jessica Cisneros has 47 percent of the vote. During a press conference this morning, Cisneros spoke about her strategy and her awareness of what this race would look like. We're going to continue doing what we're doing um, with last cycle and this cycle as well, talking, mobilizing voters, talking about our policy, introducing our campaign to as many folks as possible. We knew from the very beginning that this was going to be a very tough election because we're going up against um, a 17 year entrenched incumbent who started off with millions of dollars. And we have reached out to the incumbent's office, Congressman Coyar, regarding the virtual tie. We're expecting reaction from him later on today, and we'll bring it to you when we get it. On the Republican side in District 28, there's also a runoff. Cassie Garcia and Sandra Witten will be facing off. That runoff election takes place on May 24th. And right now on KZ.com, you can see full recaps of all of last night's results, including the race for governor in which Governor Greg Abbott and Beto O'Rourke each secured their party's nominations. You can find it all at our homepage on KSAT.com. If you have friends who live up north, send them this picture. <laughs> It is hard to beat this weather no. outside, Ursula and David. Absolutely gorgeous. Just some wispy cirrus clouds 
that you can see out there. And not only is it really pleasant here in San Antonio, but it across the entire state of Texas. Let's take a look at those temperatures across the Lone Star State. It's 67 in Lubbock, 73 in Dallas, 68 in Houston, 73 Laredo. And here in San Antonio, we're sitting pretty at 67, 71 at Cincinnati, 64 in Seguin, 70 in New Braunfels, and 68 in Bandera. We'll see temperatures go up by another 5 to 10 degrees today before we see uh, the afternoon high around uh, 4 p.m. So another perfect day for us today. Some subtle changes in the forecast over the next few days, including foggy and drizzly mornings, both Thursday, Friday, and probably on Saturday as well. And coming up in the extended forecast, this weekend is going to be warm and humid. We're talking temperatures in the 80s, and we do have an opportunity for a shower storm late in the weekend. So we'll take a look at that and more coming up in just a few minutes. Ursula, David. Thank you so much, Sarah. San Antonio firefighters trying to find the cause of a fire that destroyed a northeast side home and possibly killed some pets, too. The fire broke out this morning on a street called Moana. That's near Eisenhower Road in Kingston Drive. Katrina Weber reports it also left a man suffering from smoke inhalation. Where there was smoke in the 4400 block of Moana Drive, there had been fire and lots of it. All four sides of the house had fire rolling out of the eaves. That's usually indicative of it being in the attic already and, and being fully involved. San Antonio firefighters noticed it right away when they arrived a little after six this morning and immediately went on the attack. They found out that three men lived in the home. One told fire crews he woke up to a crackling noise, then smelled smoke. He said when he opened the garage door that flame rolled from the garage through the kitchen. That man immediately woke up the others and they all got out. Firefighters say one man suffered smoke inhalation and was taken to a hospital. This fire clearly had a head start on firefighters. They say once they made sure everyone in that home was safe, their attention turned to keeping the fire from spreading to neighbors' homes. Soon, though, they realized all members of the family in the burning home may not be accounted for. The men told firefighters they had to leave their five dogs behind when they escaped. I don't know about some of the, the animals that were inside still. I know for sure two were recovered. They spent time looking for the other three pets, but didn't find them or the cause of the fire right away. However, investigators do believe it started in the garage. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A man who investigators have been looking for in Bear County for aggravated sexual assault of a child arrested in Jordanton yesterday. Police say John Daniel Hodge was found and arrested on Tuesday. Right now, we're still awaiting further details about the charge that Hodge is facing, but we do know he was taken by law enforcement to Atascosa County Jail following his capture. Authorities say he will be transferred to Bear County. Bulverde Spring Branch EMS respond to emergency situations at the Guadalupe River, but not just of river, also where the river flows into Canyon Lake. As the population grows exponentially, so does the number of emergency calls. But as Max Massey shows us, Bulverde Spring Branch EMS now has a new tool to help save lives. I think they're all, you know, heartbreaking, especially for the family and, and for the guys who have to do that kind of stuff. Bulverde Spring Branch EMS Chief Mark Southwell, he's been serving the community since 1995. He has seen firsthand the huge growth, but with the influx of people comes an influx of calls for help. Those calls have jumped 400 calls a year from 1995 to more than 4,500 calls a year just this year. Last year we had six uh, known drownings in the area uh, where, you know, we could trying to make recovery attempt versus uh, a rescue attempt versus a recovery attempt. The difference being uh, time frame, one is viable uh, and the other is more of a body recovery. Now, thanks to a more than $19,000 grant from the Lower Colorado River Authority, there is help on the way. What we acquired was funding to be able to purchase a specific device called the Aqua Lung Pro Diver. The mechanism allows members of the newly formed team to go underwater for longer amounts of time and still communicate with people above water. Increased capability with our technical rescue services that we provide to the citizens of Western Kamau County. It's just another layer of specialty for us to be able to provide to anybody in need in our response district. As for the chief, he just wants the community to stay safe and he knows the risk of not having this. An event's an event. Uh, but more than, than, than we would like to see for sure. 
I mean, one is one too many. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Still coming up this half hour, Bruce Bowen trying to add another huge accomplishment to his resume. That's a few minutes in sports. It is Texas Independence Day, and you can honor the day by checking out some new exhibits at the Alamo. We have details after the break. The Alamo launching two exhibits just in time for Texas Independence Day. Today we're, will be a new preview of the Phil Collins collection. It's called Supplies for War, and it's at the exhibit hall and opening of the Alamo Archaeology Exhibit inside the Long Barrack. You can see the Phil Collins collection through Sunday, April 24th. Alamo Trust officials say the preview is just a taste of what will be on display later on in the year. And since it is Texas Independence Day, admission to the preview will be free to the public. After today, admission is going to be between $5 and $9 to the public, but free to members of Friends of the Alamo. Admission to the archaeology exhibit will be free. There is another Texas version of the popular Monopoly board game. It's a Hill Country edition. Some of the well-known icons you can see featured in the game. Enchanted Rock, Hamilton Pool, the Comal and Guadalupe Rivers, Green Dance Hall, downtown Georgetown, just to name a few. The game will be officially unveiled later on this afternoon and it costs $39.99. Wow. I want a Hamilton Hill? Pool. A Hill Country version. Yes. I like that. Green Hall. I hope the weather's nice on the board. It should be. It's yeah, really nice blue skies. Out. It'd have to be blue skies, right? Yeah, gorgeous out there for us today and for the remainder of the week. But we do have a couple of subtle changes to talk about, mainly in the form of some morning drizzle and some morning fog. Hey, the aquifer is actually down quite a bit over the last 24 hours, seven tenths of a foot, inching closer and closer to that number of 660 feet above sea level. Molds are low today in the pollen count. That's about it for us. That oak we saw yesterday temporarily went away. Coming up, we'll talk about the morning drizzle and fog and whether or not we can see any rain in our forecast in the near future. We were just talking about that Hill Country Monopoly Board and Canyon Lake. I'm not sure you could go to Canyon Lake and go swimming just yet. But I don't know. I think you can put away your coats. I, I wouldn't be so fast. Please, Ursula. please. Although, oh, although no. we don't see any cold weather in the next seven days, March is a month where we do often see some cold fronts. So don't put them away yet, but just put them toward the back of the closet. You, wah, wah, wah. you might need them a little bit later this month. But hey, take a look outside. You don't need them today. Short sleeves weather. It's 67 at the airport, 71 at Stinson, and it's 70 in New Braunfels, 67 in Kerrville. I've overlaid the temperatures on top of the satellite imagery here, and you can see the wispy thin cirrus clouds that are passing through uh, south central Texas, especially up into the hill country near Fredericksburg. It's 67, 69 in Del Rio, 71 in Catula, and 73 in Laredo. Again, temperatures today going to go up another 5 to 10 degrees. So by 2, we'll be at 72, mostly sunny skies, light and variable winds. And then in the afternoon, comfortable, sunny, 74. Again, that's my kind of weather. Now tonight, the sun is going to set at 634, and it'll be a mild evening. It'll definitely be cool, but not necessarily chilly. We'll still be in the 60s by 10 p.m., and you'll notice increasing clouds after 10 p.m., the first sign of some changes in the forecast that are going to be fairly subtle. Dew points right now in the 40s and in the 30s. That's on the dry side of the scale, but take a look down toward Corpus Christi. You can see that seafoam green color kind of coming in from the south of we are going to see humidity steadily rise here over the coming days so that by tomorrow morning dew points will be in the 50s here in San Antonio. That'll lead to some fog and it'll still feel comfortable outside. Dew points in the 50s feel nice out there, but by Friday morning and Saturday morning, our dew points are going to be in the 60s and that is noticeable. That is muggy. You can feel the humidity out there once the dew point gets above 60 degrees and that'll lead to some 
some areas of drizzle in the mornings uh, by Friday and Saturday morning. But tomorrow, more like just some patchy fog early in the morning hours, and that'll quickly give way to afternoon sunshine. And so tomorrow's going to be even a couple of degrees warmer than today. Tomorrow, we'll be looking at high temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, 75 tomorrow in the afternoon in New Braunfels, 78 in Del Rio, 78 for the high in Catula, 77 in Beeville, and 76 for the high tomorrow in San Antonio. By Friday morning, with that increasing humidity, we are going to see some patchy drizzle. Could be dampened spots early in the morning commute on Friday. And then by Saturday morning, we'll have more of the same, some areas of drizzle. And then Sunday, a front is going to be moving across the state of Texas. The front won't actually move through San Antonio until Monday morning, but with it comes a small chance for some isolated thunderstorms, especially Sunday night into Monday morning. Chance for rain only 30%, so not a great chance. The better chances for rain Sunday night into Monday will be up near the Dallas Fort Worth area, the Texarkana region. And then behind that front, it's going to be noticeably cooler, not necessarily cold, but noticeably cooler to start the forecast next week. So a gradual warm up with some morning fog and drizzle through the weekend, 80 on Saturday, 82 on Sunday. That front moves through and our highs slide down into the 60s and 70s for the start of next week. I do not think, and this is the bad news, I do not think that uh, that rain chance Sunday night into Monday is going to put much of a dent, if any, impact on the drought that is slowly creeping in from the west. David and Ursula. All right, that is bad news. Thank you. Dak Prescott going under the knife, but should be ready for team workouts. We'll have an update on him for you coming up. And more high school basketball action. Several teams taking another big step towards the title. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. A little offseason surgery for Cowboy star quarterback Dak Prescott. It was on his non throwing shoulder. We told you about it as breaking news yesterday at noon, but now we have also heard from head coach Mike McCarthy. McCarthy confirmed it was on his left shoulder and should not affect Prescott's availability for their offseason program. McCarthy added that the injury was an irritant to Prescott during the last season, but does not believe that it impacted the quarterback's play. Some may argue that point, since Prescott played differently than what he did in the first six games of the season, where he looked invincible, setting a franchise record with 37 touchdown passes and missing only one game with that calf injury. Former Spur Bruce Bowen helped the Spurs win three NBA championships out of their five. He was an eight-time all-defensive team selection, and his number 12 is hanging from the rafters of the AT&T Center. The next hallmark of his career? trying to get the TMI Panthers a state championship as their head coach. The Panthers have made it to the TAPS 5A state semifinals where they will face Conroe, the Woodlands Christian. I'm thrilled that our kids have this opportunity to be recognized as, you know, one of the top teams in the state. This has been, I mean, a moment I've been waiting for for four years since I've been playing varsity. I haven't had a state run yet, uh, ever. so. In this upcoming game, you know, got, got a lot to win for. Good luck to Bruce and his team. Game time for the TMI team on Friday at Robinson High School in Waco is set for noon. All right, a number of boys high school basketball playoff action popped off last night, including Clark taking on Westlake and San Marcos Class 6A in the first quarter. Jordan Mason bringing the ball up, making his way through the defense to get the hoop for the bucket. And game tied at 12. Final seconds before the half. Cougars forced a turnover. Ethan Crowley comes over with it and scores just before the buzzer to keep things close, but the Chaparral's pull away in the second half. Connor McManus for three, and that one's a good one. The Cougars season ends. Westlake moves on 47-38. Third round in Class 5A happening at Littleton Gym. Bernie Champion taking on Buda Johnson. Chargers taking control. Second quarter, Jesse Peart spins, drive, uses the glass. It's 25-14 champion. Then a few plays later, off the miss. Braden Baum skies for the rebound and put back. Champion goes on to win it 61-56. And in Class 4A, Bernie taking on Pleasanton at Paul Taylor Feedhouse. The Greyhounds trail 24-10 early in the second quarter, but started to come back off the miss. Devin Stiles gets the rebound, flips it up and in. Counted plus one. He got the free throw, lead down to nine. Then in the final seconds of the half, Barrett Pape steals. And at midcourt, starts to break. Then Preston Thompson finds Houston Hendrick for the lay-in. Greyhounds on a 10-0 run, cut the lead down to four at the break. They make it a thriller, come from behind, win 43-40.
And defending 3A state champion Cole trying to get past Blanco. The Panthers trying to battle back early in the third quarter. Connor Chase drives inside off the glass, gets the bucket and one. Blanco opens a 5-0 run to cut the lead down to 16, but the Cougars answer right back. Silas Livingston with the up and under lay-in makes a 20-point game. And then Andreal Ray adds the exclamation point, finishing the steal with a one-handed jam. Cole cruises 78-41, and that's without Shaq. So there you go. Shaq hasn't been there in a while. Not in a while. Disney Plus telling their users to update the parental controls later on this month. The reason behind that prompt in the next half hour. And new today at five, whether you like it or not, hot or iced, all coffees can be made from home. 12 on your side, Marilyn Morris has the details on how you can save money by brewing coffee in your own kitchen. That's today at five after entertainment tonight. We want to give you an update on the coronavirus pandemic. The president's plan to keep the virus at bay uh, moving forward. A short time ago, the White House COVID response team detailing their steps to do so. The president signaling a new phase in the fight against COVID in his State of the Union address. ABC's Rita Roy has the latest. In a maskless chamber during his State of the Union address Tuesday night, President Biden saying the U.S. is now entering a new phase in the coronavirus pandemic. And thanks to the progress we've made in the past year, COVID-19 no longer need control our lives. Biden and his COVID response team laying out a plan to move forward, including more free rapid tests for Americans starting next week and a new test to treat program. To provide individuals access to testing and treatment for free, all in one stop. Hundreds of one stop sites will open across the country this month. Federal health officials also keeping an eye on new variants, saying they'll be prepared to administer a variant specific dose within 100 days if needed. I can't promise a new variant won't come, but I can, I can promise you. We'll do everything within our power to be ready if it does. As new daily cases and deaths continue decreasing across the country, more areas easing restrictions. Some New York school districts dropping mask mandates today. I know a lot of people are anti-mask, so at this point, like, you know, they can do whatever they want. But I'm going to keep my mask on. I think we need a bit longer with the mask mandate. I truly think it's like not a good idea to lift it, given the fact that some people are still unvaccinated, especially elementary school children. They're it's just not responsible to do so. COVID-related hospitalizations are at their lowest point since the Omicron surge began, but hospitalization rates amongst children under four are at a pandemic high. The White House also plans to send 475 million vaccine doses to over 100 countries in hopes of increasing the global vaccination rate and preventing future variants of concern. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. One day after deleting the State of the Union address, President Joe Biden giving a speech in Superior, Wisconsin today. That's the city with the Blatnik Bridge, which the White House says is, quote, nearing the end of its usable life. Biden is expected to talk about the bipartisan infrastructure law that will help fix roadways and other services nationwide. Some of the funds from that bill are earmarked by both Wisconsin and Minnesota to repair that bridge. The U.S. private sector adding better than expected 475,000 jobs last month. That's according to a report by paroles processing, payrolls processing firm ADP. The firm also making a dramatic revision to its January report saying instead of losing 301,000 jobs, companies actually added 509,000 jobs. The vast majority of the February hiring was done by large companies, and the leisure and hospitality sector had the largest gains. This report comes as the Labor Department's more comprehensive job report comes out on Friday. Here's a twist on why it's so nice to have this great weather. Those guys working on the roads, doing all that construction, they can get out there and get busy. They can get it knocked out. Get right? it going. <laughs> get it get knocked it. out. It's everywhere. Yeah, and it ha it, February was a month where we had several rounds of kind of cold and damp weather. And so it's nice to have this stretch here of dry, sunny, and pleasant weather. Outside right now at the airport, you can see a few cirrus clouds out there. And generally, temperatures are starting to get up into the upper 60s and low 70s. 67 degrees winds from the south at seven miles per hour. 
Relative humidity at a comfortable 45%. And if you're planning on picking up the kiddos after school today, just know it's going to be really nice. 74 degrees, comfortable winds from the south at about 5 miles per hour. Plenty of sunshine with those cirrus clouds out there. Now, what to expect? Another perfect day today, but tomorrow we're going to be seeing some morning fog. It'll be nice in the afternoon and warm, but by Friday we'll have some drizzle and some dampness on the roads early in the morning hours. And for the weekend warm, we're talking temperatures in the 80s. It's going to be noticeably humid outside too, and we'll have an opportunity for a shower or storm late in the weekend. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to be a washout, but I will talk about those rain chances more in depth coming up in just a few minutes. David Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. New health information for women starting menopause before 40 years old is linked to a 35% higher risk of getting dementia later on. That's the latest from a study that hadn't been published yet, but will be presented this week at the American Heart Association's conference. Study authors say the connection between early menopause and dementia could have to do with the fact that estrogen levels plummet when a woman starts menopause, and after a while, a lack of estrogen weakens your body's antioxidant defenses, which can cause your brain to age. The good news, there are things a woman can do to prevent cognitive decline if she starts menopause early, like staying at a health weight, exercising regularly, not smoking or drinking, even taking part in educational activities. Now to COVID-19 and its effect on mental health among children and teenagers. The alarms have been sounding over the last year or so by health officials and hospitals who say the nation is in crisis with U.S. Surgeon General calling the pandemic's impact on young people's mental health devastating. So what are some of the signs that parents should look for if you think your child might be struggling? There can help. We have a way for you to help. Here's ABC's Karen Travers with some answers. Elle was in sixth grade when the COVID-19 pandemic began. Like millions of kids, their life was turned upside down. As like the weeks went on doing remote learning, I lost many things that I thought I'd never lose. That's when I really started to go into like my state of depression. Elle, who identifies as non-binary, says they were already having a tough time with friendships, but the disruptions and isolation of the pandemic made things worse. This is not me just being moody and sad. It's like much more than just being sad. Elle is not alone. One study found depression and anxiety symptoms in children have doubled compared to pre-pandemic estimates. All of a sudden, the world was sort of closed to you, and that led to a significant increase in depression and anxiety symptoms for teens. One of the more troubling trends, suspected suicide attempts for girls ages 12 to 17 were up nearly 51% in 2021. Elle was hospitalized multiple times in the past two years for suicidal ideation and attempts. The anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, all of it was all spilling out and it didn't, I couldn't keep myself safe. Elle's mother Amy struggled with how to best help. Because of the stigma, you know, the system really isn't set up to make things seamless, right? You have to do a lot of fighting and a lot of advocating and a lot of looking on your own. A co-worker connected Amy to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, or NAMI, a nationwide organization that offers free mental health services and peer-led support groups and programs. We're not born knowing how to deal with mental health challenges in ourselves or in our loved ones. But there's help out there, and you don't have to go through it alone. NAMI says calls to its New York City helpline increased 200 percent over the past two years. Experts say key signs parents should look for in their teens include isolation, a lack of interest in extracurricular activities, not wanting to engage with friends, and substance and alcohol abuse. Elle says they're now doing better. Amy and Elle's advice? If your child is telling you how they feel, to believe them and to trust them. The first step is really hard and really scary, but once you take that first step, like that leap of faith, it slowly gets easier. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Parents can contact NAMI's national helpline at 1-800-950-NAMI or visit nami.org slash help. And if you or someone you know is, <clears throat> pardon me, in crisis, you can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. That phone number, 1-800-273-8255. We'll be right back.
is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. NVIDIA says hackers are leaking stolen information online. It includes employees' credentials, proprietary source code, and other highly confidential data from last week's cyber attack. The hacker gang c- confirms they stole one terabyte of information from the most valuable chip maker in the U.S. A cargo ship carrying thousands of luxury cars sank into the mid-Atlantic on Tuesday, two weeks after it caught fire near the Azores. All crew members were evacuated from the Felicity Ace in mid-February. That that same day in mid-February. The luxury car ship was on a transatlantic voyage from Germany to the U.S., carrying over 1,000 Porsches and 200 Bentleys. UC Berkeley's eight-year legal fight for patent rights to the CRISPR gene editing tool has failed, opening the door for MIT and Harvard's Board Institute to claim ownership. The gene editing technique has revolutionized genetic research and biotech over the last decade, allowing scientists to cut and change DNA coding with ease. This week's ruling will likely force all of the companies that had partnered with UC Berkeley to renegotiate terms with the Broad Institute. And that's your Cheddar News and Tech Update. I'm Hannah Doba from New York City. Disney announced a number of Marvel shows that originally streamed on Netflix will be heading to Disney Plus on March 16th. It also announced on Twitter it's prompting all its users in the U.S. to update their parental controls that day. The shows coming to Disney Plus include Daredevil, The Punisher, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Jessica Jones. Disney did not say if this means new episodes of the shows will air on the service. We're looking outside with live cam. We can look at this all day long. But if you can get out in the sunshine, get your vitamin D. Go for it. Just don't forget the sunscreen because we haven't had to use it regularly in quite some time. Hey, so we have beautiful weather out there. There's no doubt about that. But we do have to talk about the fact that drought is expanding in from the west. And so we could really use some rain. An updated drought monitor is issued every Thursday. So make sure to tune in. Meteorologists here at KSAT will have an updated look at that drought monitor. The aquifer is suffering from a lack of water. It's down 7 tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours about eight feet below the monthly average for uh, March. And as far as the pollen count goes, at least that looks good. Molds are present in low amounts, but they're the only allergen present. Coming up, we'll talk about a subtle change and increase in humidity. That'll lead to some morning drizzle and dampness out there by the week's end. A lot of folks hoping this good weather sticks around. This is just like teeing it up for spring break. I didn't realize spring break was like Monday. Till the is it? Day. Yeah. Some, oh. people, some schools are out starting Monday. Right. Ooh. And you know, I guess I better get busy as a, as a mom. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. But you know, looking at the weather, just a quick snapshot does look like there's going to be a couple of cold fronts next week. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. But th- don't freak out. There will be some good days mixed in there, I'm sure. OK, take a look outside. Uh, we've got temperatures comfortable right now in the 60s, upper 60s, 67 degrees at the airport, 70 in New Braunfels, 71 in Pleasanton and at Stinson, 67 in Hondo. I love this graphic because what you can see is the satellite imagery too. A weather satellite was just launched up into orbit yesterday uh, for uh, for the western half of the United States. And you can see just the high resolution here of those cirrus clouds streaming in across the northern hill country and around San Antonio too. So we're going to have a nice sunset tonight, I think, like the last few sunsets. Anytime you get these high wispy clouds, it ends up being fairly pretty in the evening hours. So sunset happens at 634 if you're looking forward to that uh, sunset. Otherwise, it's going to be a comfortable afternoon in the low to mid 70s, 74 for the high temperature, light and variable winds. We're going to be cool tonight, not necessarily cold, but temperatures will be in the 60s for most of the evening. We'll see increasing clouds later tonight coming in from the west and by the start of the morning tomorrow it should be mostly cloudy with some areas of fog take a look at dew points right now dew points are in the 30s and 40s that is dry that is comfortable but down to the southeast toward corpus christi and victoria you can see dew points are in the 50s you can even make out this green color here we're going to slowly see a surge of gulf moisture from uh, tonight through the weekend that's going to make things feel pretty muggy by the weekend let's take a look at the big picture right now across uh, the nation fairly quiet except for the pacific northwest some 
rain out there and a high pressure system to our east. Now air moves around a high pressure system in a clockwise fashion and so it's picking up that Gulf humidity and it's slowly going to slug it into south central Texas. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means that dew points will be in the mid to upper 50s by Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we'll be looking at dew points in the 60s. That's noticeably humid and it'll lead to morning drizzle and fog, especially Friday and Saturday. But even tomorrow morning, we're going to have areas of patchy fog for your morning commute. So plan accordingly. That fog will uh, lift and we'll see plenty of sunshine into the afternoon. That means we're going to be a few degrees warmer than today. Tomorrow, our highs will be in the mid to upper 70s. Out west toward Del Rio, closer to 80 degrees tomorrow. 77 in Pleasant and 75 for your Thursday high temperature in New Braunfels and 76 in San Antonio. We were talking about rain chances uh, before the break and they're fairly slim. Sunday, Sunday night into Monday, we have a chance for some showers and storms as our next cold front makes it here. But really, again, only a 20 to 30 percent chance. And what is that going to do to temperatures? We mentioned that uh, spring break starts next week. We'll have temperatures in the 80s over the weekend, but with that front moving through, our highs will slide into the 60s and 70s. So not frigid weather, but definitely a little cooler and windier as we start spring break next week. Otherwise, though, enjoy the beautiful weather. This weekend is going to be good for outdoor activities, especially after that morning fog and drizzle. All right, Sarah, thank you. Long lost love letters are helping a grandson get to know his grandmother a little bit better. How a stranger found the letters and then delivered them to him. And a four year old decided to take a little me time before getting on the school bus. Now the video of this defiant act is going viral. Not different. A child in Kansas is going viral after getting caught on camera. Oh, the drama, trying to catch the bus. Take a look, four-year-old Haley Tucker. Well, <laughs> just over it. The student was gonna get on the bus, and he put on his mask, and then he decided he just wasn't in the mood. We've all been there, right? Yep. He just throws himself to the ground. <laughs> when he's really tired, he gets a bit grumpy, and then, then he gets way over dramatic. I saw somebody comment that, that growing up was learning how to do that in your head instead of in physical form, and uh, that's exactly right. I think we all feel like this on Monday, and I think that's why it's so relatable, um, is to see the bus and just be like, I can't do it today. Look at him <laughs> banging rocks together while his parents are doing the interview. His parents say the real heroes of the bus staff, the driver got off the bus and helped Haley get it together and get aboard. Look That's at that. Great stuff. Just plops down right there on the driveway. Not today. Long after the music played for one couple, their strawberry letters have been discovered decades later by a woman doing her spring cleaning. The treasure trove she stumbled upon was actually the telling of a love story for the ages. Here's ABC's Will Gans with more. I wrote you every day for a year. You wrote me? Yes. A hidden box of love letters found more than half a century after they were written. You get to the back of like the attic crawl space is kind of what I'm calling it. And there's these two boxes full of letters and it's very like notebook-esque. They're clearly from decades ago. Anna Prilliman discovering an entryway into an attic crawl space that she never knew was in her Richmond, Virginia home. It was a door that didn't open this way. It kind of opened this way, had a latch on it. I never had noticed it before because there was a dresser that was always in front of it. A hundred letters written in the early 1950s addressed to Betty Sue McGee. There was a lot of military dudes that were shooting their shot on Betty Sue. <laughs> <laughs> the 1950s equivalent of sliding into your DMs, I guess. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but the most romantic among them coming from a man named Vance Long. I do love you, honey, with all my heart. Already, I am just waiting until I can hold you close again and have that wonderful feeling of walking on a cloud return. I miss you something awful, Betty. All my love, Vance. And I was like, I got to find 
the family of these people because this is cool. Anna turning to Facebook for help tracking down the family. And within days, she was in touch with a man named Dalton Long, 3,000 miles away in Portland, Oregon. Dalton confirming Betty Sue and Vance tied the knot and were married for more than 50 years. Dalton knows the couple well because he's their grandson and grew up with them in the house where Anna now lives. Other than distant memories of when he was a kid and a few, you know, old timey pictures, he, he didn't know much. So to be able to have words, not only like a letter, but like a hundred letters. How cool is that? It wasn't over. Still isn't over. Anna says Vance started each of his letters to Betty Sue with the salutation, Hi, honey. So if she ever turns this into a movie or a book, which she should, Hi, honey will be the title. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Sound like Aww. Sounds like some Hallmark cards in there somewhere, too. Definitely a Hallmark Christmas special exactly. of some sort. Mike Osterhage would like that. Yeah, he would. <laughs> if he was here, he'd yeah. love to hear that, right? right? <laughs> yes. All right. Well, Spring break is coming up, and you know what? Adventure awaits even in your own backyard. That's right. Author and mom, Christy Cuthbert, is here to show us some fun ways to keep them busy, including a game. Yes, at home, printed out, free bingo card. Walk around the neighborhood. Find all the little critters, flowers, oh, things in your neighborhood. They'll be engaged. I love it. And many more different things that we're going to share from Christy as well. And, well, you know what? How about taking a vacation for spring break? Well, you have plenty of options to get you home and back in a flash. We're going to tell you the vacation destinations with nonstop flights from right here in the Alamo City. That's always nice, those nonstop flights. And can you hear our next guest? A little kitten here from the Animal Defense League. Julie, welcome. Thank and there's you. a reason why we have kittens today, right? Yes, yes. We are preparing for our kitten season, which we anticipate to be huge again this year. And beautiful little babies like this oh. are going to need your help, our community support. All right. Thank we're going to, so and you're even going to let us bottle feed, oh. right? Yes, we're yes. We're going to hope we're you gonna got bottle right. feed babies. <laughs> <laughs> And if you're looking for something invigorating, frightening, and fun to do over spring break, oh, I take you to SeaWorld where I check out one of the newest rides they have there. I'm excited to see that. That and much more coming up on SA Live.